This video is brought to you by Optin Monster. Use Optin Monster to convert and monetize your website traffic and grow your email list. Just click on the link in the description below to get started. The first 200 people to use the coupon code WPBVIP will get 25% off Optin Monster. In this video, you'll learn how to do keyword research for your website. And this is a great way to increase traffic. And if you're looking to do affiliate marketing or sell your own digital products or physical products, then this will work for conversion as well. So if you're ready, let's get started. This is the second video in a series that we're doing on SEO for beginners. So if you're wanting to do better on your website, then go ahead and click on the subscribe button so you'll be notified of our future videos when they come out. But first, let's talk about what is keyword research. All it is is basically making sure that your site has the keywords that people are searching for when they're in a search engine like Google. And you just want to make sure that you have what they're looking for. Now that you know that there are keywords and you just want to make sure that you have them on your site, there's another step that you want to make sure that you have. Okay, so most keywords are broken down into four basic user intents. And this really helps for you to know what kind of user intent keywords you want to put on your site. It's really powerful once you get to know and understand this process. And there are four main ones. The first one is navigational. This is mainly for branded websites that are already known and people are simply typing in the brand name because they want to go to that brand's site. For instance, when you want to go to Netflix, you simply will type in Netflix into the search results and then you'll go there. You can do that with most everything, Facebook, even Google. So that's navigational. And unless you're a branded site, you're probably not going to see much of that. The next one we'll talk about is transactional. These are basically keywords that people know that they want to purchase something and they're putting that into the search results. This is like if you know the exact model number for a camera that you want to buy and you're typing it in because you want to go to a shopping cart or an e-commerce site and you're just doing that with Google to get you there. If you have a blog or a small business website or a niche or authority site, you're probably not going to do too much of the transactional simply because you're probably not selling your own items. It will become important later on when you do sell your items. So do keep that in mind. The next two are very important for bloggers, hobbyists who want to turn their hobby site into money making. And for if you have a niche or if you have an authority site, I'm talking about pretty much all of these. It can also work for a small business website, but I'm concentrating on blogs. So I'm going to say blog throughout the rest of this video. But the next one is informational. And this is the majority of what we all have keywords on. This is creating a solution for a problem that they have. This is answering the questions that they have. The majority of searches that are done online nowadays it falls into the informational category. And this is great because if you can answer these questions or if you can solve these problems that people are typing those keywords into, then you're naturally going to increase traffic, which is awesome. Here's a caveat. The informational searches are great because it's telling people how to find the solution to what they're looking for. They're not as great for if you're wanting to do affiliate marketing or if you're wanting to sell your own item, then the informational, they don't have that mindset to purchase something. They simply have the mindset of they want to fix something. And this is where the investigational category comes in. Let's say you're redoing your kitchen and you're just wondering how do you redo your cabinets? There's all this information on what to do, but you're just wondering how to get that done. You're, you, you don't yet know what all you need to buy and you're not in that mind frame yet. Later on, though, you'll know that in order to redo your cabinets, you may need to get paint or you may need to get scrapers, whatever the list is, you know that finally you're going to have to start searching for that. So then you'll start to do best paint for kitchen cabinets. And that is the investigational part because they're looking for products or services or things that will help them do what it is they're trying to do. Most of these done are done with modifiers and these are like top review best. These are all modifiers and these are all indications that people have a buyer's intent and they're looking for something to buy or they're looking for the best tool or the best product to help them with their journey. The two big categories that you want to focus on are informational and investigational for your blog. The next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and do some keyword research. Now, the first thing that you'll want to do is just brainstorm. You should know the content about your topic better than anyone. So go ahead and write down all the things that you think people are searching for 
for your topic. But here's where keyword research is helpful. A lot of times you know your content better than anyone else. And so you've probably forgotten a ton of information or a ton of questions that people might ask simply because you've been doing it a long time. And this is also the power of keyword research. So now let's cover three methods that you can use to do keyword research. And the first one will be free. What we want to do is open up a new browser and let's head over to Keywords Everywhere. Keywords Everywhere is an extension for Chrome or for Firefox. So you can install it from here. And once you do, you get a little icon here with a K with a circle in it. And I'll show you what this does. So now I can go to Google and top in a key, type in a keyword, say garden tools, and you'll see I have it up here. I also see a volume. This is the monthly estimated monthly search volume. This is also the cost per click if you're doing Google AdWords. And now they're showing a competition for the competitive, how competitive the keyword is. Over to the right, you also see related keywords. So this is almost like related keyword research, or if somebody typed this in, they typically type these items in as well. And you can see the volume and the CPC and the competitiveness of that. I believe this competitiveness deals with the CPC. So it's not something that we'll deal with. Our main concern is looking at volume as well as just looking at the other keywords that it's showing. But this is powerful because then you can start to get an idea of what people are searching for in your topic. And the beauty of this is you can export this to a CSV where then you can open it up into Google Sheets or Excel so that you can start creating your content editor or your blog editor, you know, where you decide which keyword are you going to write about next or which topic are you going to write about next. And so you scroll down and then you could scroll down even further at the bottom of the search related to garden tools that Google does and you see even more down here. So that's a really powerful way to start building up your keyword list of things that you can write about. Now, one of the other things that you can do in addition to the keywords everywhere tool is go to answer the public. This is a free tool called answer the public and it allows you to type in again, a seed keyword, and then it will go out and bring back information. So we'll do garden tools again. You can see that it's going through and bringing in. What I like about this is it brings in a lot of questions and that is perfect for your website to do informational keyword research. So you're, you're bringing in the topics easily. And this is great for when you're wanting to grow your website, just answer all these questions that people are asking that you maybe didn't even remember that they would have an issue with. It'll give you this visualization that you can see. But if you don't want to keep moving your head around, you can click on the data part. And one of the great things is it'll bring it all back in under the categories of the different questions that they ask. But the keywords everywhere is also pulling in the data and showing you the information here as well. So what you could do with this is sort by highest to lowest if you want to hit the higher volume keywords first. Or some people will do the lowest first because they're thinking that it's probably less competition. Not as many people are writing about the keywords that only have 30 a month searches. So this is super powerful as well. And you can just go through and see all of the questions that people are asking. And then it'll go down and also do, we'll have to do data again. And it'll also do prepositions. So those are huge as well. And it just gets you really excited about your topic. And you realize there's so much more that you can write about to help the users on their journey of say doing gardening or whatever your website is about. So you can go through here and again, you can download the CSV to open it up in Google Sheets or Excel. So then you can create a content flow of what's the next topic to write about. Okay, so that's a really quick and easy way to get keyword research and get started on your site to write the content that you know people are searching for. If you want to take it as step further or do a little bit more digging then the next two methods will be for you. These are paid tools that you can use and it allow you to do keyword research for your site. Now these tools do so much more than just keyword research, but for some people just starting out, it might not be feasible because they are paid. The good thing with the, both of these SEMrush and Ahrefs is they do have a trial period that you can do, which is free or very low cost. And you can get up and running and do quite a bit of research for your website in that trial period. 
So I'm going to show you SEMrush first. I believe they've changed it now where you have to sign in or create an account before you can even do anything. It'll automatically log me in. So just know that there's a difference with that. So once you've logged in and signed in, then you have this whole dashboard area. What we can do here is simply put in our seed keyword and we'll click search and then it'll go out and it'll bring back several keywords that are associated with this. So scrolling through, we get about volume of 33,000 a month. And you can also see the competition. This is for paid search. I don't really use that to worry about anything. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the phrase match keywords. And this is all the other keywords that are associated with this keyword, which is great. Okay. And once we go in here and look at garden tools, then you can see several of the related ones. And I've clicked on questions to concentrate on just the questions that are being asked for this topic. And here you can see the volume. So that's the estimated monthly search volume here. You also see their particular KD score or their keyword difficulty score on how difficult it might be for you to rank in the results. Over here, you see that there are this many 10.9 million results from different sites having how to sharpen garden tools somewhere in their article. So those are pretty big as well and competitive. You can tell that something down here might not be as difficult to rank. And if there's NA, it just simply means that they don't have the data on it. It might be too small for them to return the data. And just like with answer the public, you can come up here and export all of your keywords. So you would have a total volume of 7,300 keywords that you can target. And then that's an easy way to get a whole bunch of keywords associated with your topic. You'll want to do this for multiple topics that you have for your site and just find the best keywords that you want to answer these questions or write about this topic for your audience. In addition to the questions area, if you scroll down, you can also see that they're also grouping some of these where they've seen say rust on 32 keywords and you can click on that. And this is a super way to categorize your topics based on these keywords as well. So if you have a lot of rust garden tools, then you can write about all of these and kind of subcategorize them under rusted garden tools. Same thing with shed or any of these others. Now, you see there's a modifier for best and that will be super for investigational where you may also write something about your best garden tools or best garden tools for weed eaters. You know, if you can write about those items and share your experience, then that will help them make their decision and should also give you affiliate commissions as well. So there are some modifiers in here that you can look at and we can also do our modifiers here. So let's go to all and we'll go to broad match include I'll do review. And then he, these are all the investigational keywords that I would want to do for my site. So basically they're wanting to do a review on the Aldi five in one garden tool. So that's a quick way to do modifiers. So you could just keep on going through here and doing best review top things like that to see what are people searching for? What are they looking to buy? And then write the information on those topics as well. So these are great methods that you can use today to get started with keyword research for your site. Pick the one that works best for you and go ahead and get your keyword list together. In the next video, I'll talk about on-page SEO and how it helps you improve your website traffic. This will be especially helpful if you already have a website and you're wanting to improve the traffic of your website. It'll also be a good starter for people who are just getting started to make sure that you're doing it right from the get-go.